Chapter 5 B. Source Documents and Coding 3. An important item that is purchased in a manufacturing business is materials. They are usually kept in a warehouse or inventory room, which is usually called the store's department. The storekeeper keeps an eye on the raw materials and will create a purchase requisition if the store runs low. Most businesses keep a record of the materials they have in inventory. The perpetual system is an inventory system, where inventory is updated every time materials are received or issued, and a new balance is calculated. This system can be manual or computerized. There are two types of inventory records. Bin cards, which are manual records, kept by the store's department. Store's ledger accounts, which are usually kept by the accounts department. Bin cards are manual records, kept by the store's department. The following are information that is usually found on a bin card. Description, of the inventory item. Inventory code so that the item can be easily identified and updated to the computerized records. Inventory units, how the inventory item is measured, for example, kilograms, boxes, meters. Bin number, the location of the item in the store. Issue to production, the date, quantity and the reference number of the material requisition, which is the document that the business uses to request material from the store. Receipts, the date, quantity and the detail of either the goods received note for material received or material returned note for material that has been returned and not used in production. Balance, the quantity on hand after every inventory movement. For an example of a bin card, see page 84 of your interactive text study guide. Store ledger accounts are similar to bin cards, as they use the same information and the same source, but there are two important differences. Cost details are recorded in the store ledger account, so that the unit cost and total cost of every issue and receipt are shown, and the balance of inventory valued. They are valued because these accounts form part of the costing bookkeeping records. The store ledger accounts are written and kept by the costing department, or a store office that is separate from the stores, by a costing bookkeeping clerk. Free inventory is the inventory on hand, plus any inventory on order less any inventory schedule for use. Because bin cards and store ledger accounts are independent from each other, they can act as a control to check the accuracy of the records. The two inventory records should have the same quantities, if they don't, then the differences should be investigated. A material requisition is completed when materials are needed from the production department. A supervisor from production will sign the form, authorizing it then the store will issue the materials when they receive the material requisition. Material requisitions are used as a source document for Updating the bin cards in the store Updating the store's ledger account in the costing department And charging the job, overhead, or department that is using the material. For an example of a material requisition, see page 86 of your interactive text study guide. 4. Hourly paid workers are usually paid a flat rate per hour and a premium rate for overtime hours. Their hours worked, are normally recorded on either a clock card, job card, or time sheets. Labor costs are an important part of total cost, they include wages and salaries paid to employees, and other labor payments to labor contractors or agency workers. The records showing an individual's pay, and how it was calculated, are known as pay slips, and the records of the total labor cost, paid to employees, are known as the payroll. When recording employees' time, the bare minimum that is needed is an attendance record, which shows when the employee was at work and when they were absent, because of leave or sickness or any other reason. Hourly paid employees sometimes record their time on a clock card, that shows the times they arrived and left work. For an example of a clock card, See page 88 of your interactive text study guide. If the work being done is routine and repetitive, it may not be practical to record the precise details of it. There are a few ways to record an employee's time. A daily time sheet, a time sheet that is filled in by the employee to record how their time was spent, the total time on the time sheet should match up with the time on the attendance register. Weekly time sheet, this is similar to the daily time sheet 
but is handed into the cost office at the end of the week. For an example of a weekly timesheet see page 89 of your interactive study guide. The purposes of a timesheet are To provide management with information for analysis. The information on a timesheet may provide a basis for billing for services provided. Timesheets are used to record hours spent, and so they can support claims for, or to authorize overtime payment. When an employee does work on a job they will record the time on the job card. The job card will be given to the employee showing the work to be done and the expected time that it should take. Any tea and lunch breaks are to be noted. If an employee works on more than one job, they need to keep a record of the time spent on each job. For examples of a job card, see page 90 of your interactive study guide. Both the timesheet and the job card need to be signed by the employee and authorized by a manager. The purposes of a job card are the same as that of the timesheet. To ensure that time is recorded accurately. To authorize overtime payment. To allow for analysis of labor hours. And to assist in the coding of labor cost. When coding labor, it is important that it be coded correctly so that the labor time is charged to the correct cost object. In service businesses, Fees to clients will be based on the hours of work done on them. 5. The sales income of a business can be analyzed in a number of different ways according to the needs of management. So however the sales income is analyzed, the sales invoice needs to be carefully coded. The possible different ways are By product By geographic location By department By division The double entry once the sales invoice has been correctly coded, will be debit, account receivables, or bank credit, sales. This is the end of Chapter 5. What will follow next is the quick quiz. After the quick quiz, do the online questions for Part C Chapter 5. Quick quiz. Question 1. When materials are received by a business, what is the internal document completed by the receiving department? A. Purchase requisition B. Goods received note C. Invoice D. Dispatch note Question 2 Statement 1 A cash discount is given for large orders, or special customers, and will be shown as a deduction on the invoice. Statement 2 a trade discount is usually given for prompt payment within a stated period. It cannot be shown as a deduction until payment has been made. A. Both statements are false. B. Both statements are true. C. Statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. D. Statement 1 is false and statement 2 is true. Question 3. The sales tax, VAT inclusive amount, rather than the net amount, should be coded on a purchase invoice. Is this true or false? Question 4. Which type of coding system uses an aid to memory in its code? Question 5. Which document is filled in by a company when goods have been delivered to them? After doing the quick quiz, do the online questions for Part C, Chapter 5. Do the questions, until you achieve 80%. Replay the lecture as needed.